And here it is, a lovely Monday after a wonderful weekend. And it's just me and Rosie, the scratching dog. Uh, Mary's a little under the weather today. It was a heck of a weekend and standing behind me there is my favorite plane. I just love this thing. In fact, I love it so much, I wanna build a bigger one. <laughs> Uh, and build it, you know, kind of from scratch, which is something I'm thinking about. Scratch building, fiberglass, fuselage, uh, foam wings sheeted with foam, uh, with uh, balsa wood, uh, two 90 millimeter fans. It uh, would be one heck of a machine and something I'm seriously considering. Uh, I do have Zamira here today. And just to be different, she's working on Deadpool again, <laughs> which is almost done. Really, honestly, and truly this time. And we're gonna start doing the mold stuff for it today. Uh, and I have <clears throat> another submarine to build. And uh, this is the R-Class type submarine from World War I, just like the one I have that you've seen before. I'm gonna build another one. And this is for the same gentleman. This is the fourth submarine I built from him. And we're gonna open it up and Look at all the goodies. This should come off. There it goes. Now, Bob Demick makes these. This is uh, OTW Designs. You can go online to OTW Designs. And he has a number of fantastic submarine models there. Uh, from large type 7s, like the one I have. Uh, which is not his kit. It's another kit. Uh, 32nd Parallel, as it was called. And these are all the other goodies that go inside. No one makes this but Bob. Uh, one of the things that's really hard about any model like this is getting back here to where the rudders go uh, and, and the hookups go. Although I believe that these two holes here are the rudders, so I'm actually able to hook up the controls this far ahead. Uh, it's nice that he already has this cut made back here. So here are all the parts that were inside. You got lovely things like that anchor. It's a beautiful anchor. Um, bits of aluminum that are attached to this for the uh, masts. And the reason he puts them on a piece of uh, wood like this is so they don't get bent. Likewise with this brass aluminum and uh, the prop shaft is right here. That's this piece of stainless steel. You can see that little fitting on the end with the bolts, which are included, um, which is really nice. It's nicely made so that this beautiful prop screws right on and tightens up really nice. Uh, these are more parts that go on the hull and the little ladder that goes. I don't think he included the ladder on mine. This is something new, I think. I don't think I got it. It's nice to see the ladders on there so I don't have to make one. Uh, and parts that go inside the sail. The ladder goes here, and this is the sail. And you can see all the detail that's on it. He's got all kinds of rivets and nice stuff. The handholds are there, which I have to cut out. There's a lot of drains I have to cut out on this. And likewise, there's the, uh, this is the inside of the, uh, the sail. Uh, this part goes here, and you have to cut all the drains in it, and this part and these are very sharp if you get one of these nice brass work. Do not make the mistake I did of jabbing your finger with them because they're so sharp. They take a bit of work to get them to fit on right, but they do fit on really well. Um, my model is certainly proof of that. Uh, these uh, have to do with the drains. These are two little fins that go uh, by the rudders, as I recall. We've got, uh, we got the front dive planes, uh, which are these here. We have the enlarged uh, rudders here, and these are the scale rudders. We will not be using those. Those do not turn the boat really well at all, but these uh, larger ones work quite well. Um, we've got uh, oil light bearings. Um, what else have we got? Uh, what are these? Oh, oh yes, no, yes, no, these, hmm, I'm confused now. One of these are the scale rudders. I believe it's these. Uh, um, 
Oh, there's the rear dive planes too. So that, that must be what these are. No, these are the front dive planes. These are the rear dive planes. It'll come clear to me when I look at my own model, which I have. Uh, this is the Teak, which was rolled up and put inside here. Very clever, Bob. Um, again, these go by the rut these go by the rudders. Um, there's the hatch. Um, another one of those. Uh, we've got. Not sure what those are. I got to take a closer look, but I do know these are little sanctions for the, uh, the hand railing that goes around there. So this is very complete kit, uh, very well detailed and marked for everything goes. All we have to do now is start cutting, 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 um, which uh, I have to decide whether I'm going to cut here or I'm going to do the cut like I had. Okay, we're having lots of fun here. Made myself a nice plexiglass uh, bulkhead to uh, support the prop, which is backing out of there. There, see how good it fits? Nice and clean, really nice. Uh, nice and straight, matches up to everything. Uh, and now these are really hard to do, but you can see what I've done is I've, I've got the bearings in there. I tape these up to their level so that there's enough room for them to turn, which is critical, and to make sure that they're actually straight down, which mine weren't. Somehow they got off. It still works, but I swore if I built one of these again, I wouldn't make that mistake. So now what I'm going to do is take some veined, we love veins, a dental acrylic, uh, it's a pink dental acrylic, and the uh, monomer here, and we're going to mix up some very waterproof, very much stronger than epoxy, quick setting dental acrylic up around those bearings to lock them in position. Now you can see what a masterful job I did uh, putting in the uh, dental acrylic, which is already starting to harden up. And this will ensure that these bearings are locked in really nice and tight and that our, uh, that our, that our planes are, are even and, and nice and level all the way around. They certainly appear to be. This one might be a little cockeyed, but it's so infinitesimal. So here we go. They're nice and straight. Uh, and not too much play. Pretty darn solid. This could be tightened up a little bit more. Um, the wheel collars are actually oversized, but I put 1 8 sleeves in them. So I have plenty of uh, ability to turn smoothly. They're, they're both uh, straight. Once I straighten them out there, see? Straight. Nice and, and very strong. So it's lovely Tuesday at SNG Studio and we are continuing on with this build. Uh, and what I'm doing now is making formers so that this uh, little bulkheads, this will sit exactly level to the boat, to the hull, to these sides, to this uh, prop shaft here. Uh, and basically I'm cutting them out of this really cool red scrap piece of plex I have so I'm about to do the front bulkhead and you get the first bulkhead in and then you get the second bulkhead in you can just see it underneath there uh, and you put the level on there because you want this to be level as you can see it's not right now you want this to be level so they so want to be level to that so that's what I'm doing so I got the other bulkhead just sort of sitting in there you can just see it over there see it and uh, what I've done is uh, I've checked because it's really important that this be correct. That shaft to that shaft have to be really level so I can make a nice coupler there. And I'm seeing that this is also pretty ding dang level. Oh, helps if I have the camera on that. I do that a lot and I apologize because I'm looking at what's there. So it's really, really close. It's certainly going to be fine. So now, uh, and I believe we're lined up. Uh, also, this way, which we apparently are, so that's good too. I mean, a little tweeny bit off, but very, very slight. So, uh, now what I'm going to do is fix these bulkheads into the cylinder here and um, then put it back in. You need to put some stops on it so it won't go forward and back, hold downs for it to keep it from floating up, uh, and then I can start working on addressing, connecting this. Uh, and then I'm going to move on to attaching these and hooking up our dive planes. Okay, both bulkheads are in. I just used CA and some kicker, and I'm telling you, those things are in there so strong, I don't need epoxy. I mean, they just 
you know, this is directly to, to, to raw glass polyester and acrylic, and they're very, very strong and very clean, which, which I like. So, real pretty to look at, even though most people will never see the inside. So, here's my uh, extension coupler combination. Since there's really no, uh, I don't have to be in an angle or everything, and everything's level. All I have to do is couple this. And so, what I've done is taken a Dremel tool and I've ground through the brass sleeve uh, extension, whatever you want to call it, and into this, the uh, stainless steel a bit. And then I'm going to take one of these with stainless steel grub screws and I'm going to uh, slip them over and tighten them down. Now you can see there I got a nice little flat spot because you just don't want to tighten these down onto a smooth shaft. They will tighten, they will hold for a while, and then sometimes they'll start to slip. So you put that little notch in there. And I you know, went through both the brass into that so they'll just fit in and notch over. And there we go. And you can see this turns really easily and very smooth. You don't have uh, anything that's out around. Everything straight on all the way. So that's a very nice, that's going to run very smooth and very quiet. We got bearings all the way around. I probably should put a couple of wheel collars there to keep the uh, prop from going forward and backwards as well. So now we're having fun with tail feathers, and the basic assembly looks like this. Uh, he gives you these stainless steel rods to put through. You're going to want to cut those shorter. You don't want them sticking out like that, but he gives you extra. These are already embedded. Uh, you can use a bearing in there. I've just, I did on mine, decided not to in this because uh, really this just, just moves so well without it. There's really no slop. It's just another step I don't need to do. Um, I've hollowed out this one too, so I'll be able to put this in in a minute, but I want to glue one in and make sure that it's straight and level. Now, if it's not straight, then this doesn't move very easily, so it's got to be level. First one glued on, very smooth movement. Uh, very strong, rigid, very level, and to get the, uh, if I can, with one hand, to get this out so I can do the other work on it, you basically pull this pin out and you kind of tilt that, if this had a bearing in it, you couldn't turn it down at, at an angle, but you turn down at an angle, it comes right out, so you can keep plenty of shaft in there, but you see it's really solid without the bearing. So Bob gives you these little paper templates, and what I did is pre-drill them, uh, and I'll clean these up and then cut them out and then rounded them off with a Dremel tool, got the burrs off of them, and these will go uh, on the back sides, the back sides of the tail feathers there. So here we have our uh, little part that uh, Bob has you make from his template, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on here, and it'll be uh, come clear to you how uh, this all works out. So there we go. I'm pretty good at doing this with one hand, aren't I? Okay, and we're gonna um, <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna really try. All right, here we go. Push that pin in there. Push that pin in there. Well, you get the idea. I need both hands to get that pin in. But uh, you can see how this one works. You can see the arm underneath that uh, will be connected to by a push rod and uh, it gives us a way to move these controls. Okay, so I've got uh, the connector connected to here. I have to get more brass tomorrow. This goes to a thinner piece of brass which goes down here to a Z-bend and when I move the whole thing you can see I have very adequate, uh, and very smooth movement of the tail feathers. So this is what we want and I just have to do it to the other side but it's, uh, it's quite nice. So this is just temporary. I have to uh, file that down, clean it up a bit more, everything. But basically what I wanted to do, and also, that is not stainless steel. I have to get some brass tomorrow. But I wanted to, to test the mechanism, make sure it actually is working. And you can see that it does very well. Uh, and this affords me a lot of rudder movement. Uh, on the rudders, oh, there we are. So we're really good. So this is how the connectors work that I like to make, and these uh, are um, 1 8 wheel collars. Actually, these are uh, slightly bigger, and I got a sleeve on there, and there's a hole in there and a flat spot, and they connect onto here. And of course, when you move this, you get this movement. Okay? I always set out to do something every day, and uh, 
reach a certain goal and uh, I pretty much did it. I didn't get the stops in to keep this cylinder from going back and forth and I will do that. Uh, but I wanted to get all the pendages in, all the, uh, all the, uh, the business, the tail feathers, the prop, the, uh, our rudders moving and all that, this in its uh, bulkheads that hold it in place and this now. Uh, which will eventually be hooked up to a servo uh, that comes out here, which will be hooked to this, and these will be used for trim. The stops are in. Those are those little red things down there, and they keep the cylinder from moving backwards and forwards. And what keeps it from turning are just the rubber bands. They just they hold it in pretty tight. So I used to put the stops down here, but once the rubber bands are on, it doesn't move. The torque's not that great, so. Uh, but it's a nice clean install, I think, and uh, everything's level and nice. I'll be able to hook these up tomorrow, get these moving. So here it is, Wednesday. I'm still on the submarine. Uh, I really want to finish this before I go back to work on the, the film project. I got my brass in, and uh, so we got a much um, tighter setup. You see the solder there? The solder is to keep this stuff from floating. When you do Z-bends, they float, if, you know, they don't fit precisely. So the way to get them to lock up good, so they don't move, put a little bit of solder on top of them and then put them in. Works every time. As you can see, I've got uh, a lot of a rudder here. I don't have the servos in, but you can see just how much those rudders are turning. And it's very, it's a lot. So likewise, we got really good movement on these. So uh, then I went, once I was done with those and I hooked up these, no servos. He is sending me servos. Uh, I'll move it from here. I'll be the servo. Very smooth. Very, very nice. Uh, over here, uh, these are the hold downs where I will put the um, rear bands across, which is a technique I learned from David Merriman. Uh, I was always kind of come up with something fancy to hold these down with. He said, ah, just use rubber bands. So rubber bands, really, and, and I've been using it for years, and they work. Okay, next step, I am going to cut this front section off and, and glue this part here to this part here. Basically, I kind of just go through like this, follow that line, and I make a score. Hey, what's the score? Popeye used to do that. Anyway, go like that. It all the way around. Hold the heck down straight. The panel lines are following those, and they're not exactly straight. Uh, they weren't on a real boat either. But for this cut, you want to be pretty straight. So once I get to that point, I'm going to start actually getting in there somewhere. I was having a really hard time cutting through this, uh, more so than the last one I did, so the hole was a little thicker. So I used one of these. It's a Dremel tool, I call it the death saw. These things are deadly. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Focus. There you go. You see those little teeth? <clears throat> when that's turning really fast and you lose concentration, as I have been witness to, it's quite literally a bloody mess. And I don't think you can get these anymore. I rarely use them because they literally, it just skips, beam, and hits you you're in trouble. So I don't recommend them, but for times like this, it came in really handy and I was able to cut through this like butter. And there we go, we have our cut. So now I'm gonna clean this up by flat sanding it a bit and the gap gets filled <coughs> with uh, putty after we you know, actually fit this. So here we are, it's uh, Thursday, we're back at this. This is now officially epoxied on and uh, Interesting, the epoxy doesn't seem like it's really set up as good as it should be. Hmm, I'm not used to encountering that. It might have something to do with the tape, but it's definitely glued on good. Well, anyway, so that's on. This, of course, you know, all has to be cleaned up, sanded, blended. Now, you see there's this gap here that isn't here. This is caused by the fact that this top does not fit exactly perfectly level to this side. There's a little bit of warpage, so it's easy enough to fix. All we do is um, put some putty in there. <laughs> so using a cutoff wheel, I cut some sawed thick brass 
This is about 3 16th brass. And you notice that they're staggered. They're not, you know, like even. It's like, like almost like this. And this is based on where I needed most to be, uh, to pull them in. I used to just like put one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, make them all even on both sides. That's not necessary. Um, this isn't about looks, this is about being uh, functioning. And uh, to, to function correctly, I didn't glue that one in, did I? Uh, they need to be at the exact point where it will pull this whole level to itself the best. So I've tacked them in now, which is pretty strong with the CA, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and put some uh, dental acrylic up behind them to make them strong. Okay. Uh, it's been asked before on the subcommittee forum about uh, dental acrylic and um, I'm using cold cure and this is the monomer liquid liquid that I get from Berman's I believe also Berman's does carry this but also Davis Dental Supply uh, in Burbank will uh, send you in LA will also I think to that ah, North Hollywood you can you can actually see you can freeze frame this 2k image and you can get their phone number and everything if you're interested and you can order some of the, this is the pink with veins, and this is the liquid monomer, and I'm gonna mix them up, and it's real simple, you just pour a little bit in there, I got only one person here today, so I pour a little bit in there, a little bit of liquid, not too much, add some of the powder to it, so you get kind of a, a soupy mix, and you're gonna put it in behind here and encapsulate these, they will never move. So there it is, I've mixed it up, you can see it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's how it, Behaves and with my gloves on, I'll be able to kind of handle this almost like like clay. So, uh, and we're going to put it in behind those. So there we are. Those are encapsulated, and those will be as hard as a rock after I have some more tea, uh, and they'll never come out or shift. I mean, I built up more than I needed to, but the thing is, they're in there nice and strong. And you're able to shape this stuff even after it starts to go off. And I just mix this. If you just take a little bit of the liquid, and I've got some on my hand right now, you can sit there and, and shape this stuff to make it really clean and nice shape if you want. Well, okay, I've got the, the pins are in. And uh, we got a little bit of gaps here, not bad. This is a, a, an edge lip which has to be sanded down. Uh, these things don't fit 100% perfect, so you have to you have to work on it a bit. But that's a pretty good fit compared to what it was before. We've got a nice blend across here. This is really nice right here. So you can see how the pins do. And right now, what's going on is that inside there, the dental acrylic is getting very hard, and it allows the pins to kind of move a bit. And then when it sets up, they'll be really locked in the right position. This opens and closes very easily. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grease up this and uh, rough this up a bit and use dental acrylic again because it's much stronger than putty and I'm going to um, force into this crack here and after it sets up it's going to be rock hard and it's going to make a perfect seam blend right there. Not being able to stop myself I wanted to get the sail to fit really good and, and uh, so I figured the best thing to do was to take uh, a piece of sandpaper, put it on the contour and go back and forth, which is what I've been doing, and it's really starting to fit good. In a minute here I'll show you. This will sit down, seat down really well. So there we go. I think this qualifies as a good fit uh, all the way around. Sails nice and level and it's, uh, it fits right in the little slots that Bob's got there uh, that marks where this is supposed to be. And as you can see it's clean all the way around and a nice seat. So. Moving right along here, I have now uh, temporarily fit these. The uh, sail itself is bolted in, uh, as you can see under there, and uh, with a bolt system uh, and some nice hold downs there. And this, of course, is all open straight through to the ocean. You can see the, the light coming through there, so this is going to vent very well. So here we are, this is what we got done today. Uh, really going together quite well. I'm not happy with all this, but we'll fix it. Got to get these welds to match up, although... Submarines in general, especially back in World War One, better or really World War II, were built very, very quickly, and not everything was perfectly even and regular on them. Rivets, weld lines, the holes were dented, 
uh, just like the ones there are today too to some degree but uh, back then we really had a problem so I think overall you know it's pretty good I have to open up all these holes that's next all these drains up here and the drains in the bottom and add the few little parts that are left which uh, these all go inside of where the big drain holes are and I forget where they go but they're somewhere oh here they are here's one that gets drained out and then this goes in behind it so here we are I'm doing the thankless job of drilling lots and lots of holes in this and I'm you know and putting in the drains here these are more vents that go in there and they're put in from underneath and I have uh, another one I think it goes here something goes here I'll figure it out eventually uh, <laughs> Uh, these are in here temporarily. Uh, there's another one of these vents that goes in up here. This is still yet to be repaired. But it's going to take a while to, to do all these holes. And then, of course, there's all the holes that aren't marked on this hole, which are right there. I'll make a stencil off of that, put it on the side, and make those holes there, just like I did on mine. And then there's no indicator as to where the drains go. So we're going to play Guess a Drain, always my favorite game to play and uh, put some of our own drains down in here sort of like on a gato but it's coming along pretty good i'm going to close it up for you now so you can see how how cool it cl closes actually here uh, uh, we can get isaac to shoot the camera work no. of, me, of me closing no no now i'm a cameraman now you're, now, now, now you're a cameraman isn't it true but this this close is pretty good uh i still have to sand the end of it and uh, it kind of goes in here like this we like magic. We like magic. My arthritic thumb is killing me, so bear with me. That's not going to help us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get the side here. I don't like the pin technique, but it does work. It's, uh, it was closing absolutely perfectly, he says, knowingly, uh, earlier. But something shifted or changed. But we'll get this set. Something was there. Something was there, yeah. Something is definitely giving me trouble here. Ow! There! It's shut now! I did a great job of gluing that on. Actually, I never glued that on. I'm still, I'm still being obstinate for some reason. Something. Something's there. In, the, in, in here, while you're running video, and I want you to get a shot of closing. Well, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. You know, some days you just, like I said, it closes really good once you uh, push things. Through. Those appendages will not be sticking out. They'll be attached to the watertight compartment inside, so that won't happen next time. But you can see how great the seam is here, or isn't. It's, it's, in other words, it's not there anymore. I'm punching. So this one little screw here is a stainless steel. Always use stainless steel screws, because if you don't, they'll rust, and if they're into anything, that the rust will act like a glue. This is what five hours of sleep looks like after a long day. That goes like that. Even I can make that look hard. Anyway, so it's pretty good. Closes up pretty good. I'm very happy. And then we ran out of memory. <laughs> the hole closes a lot better now. Uh, I had to loosen up the back end, do a little sanding, and uh, that, that fixed that problem. But. Anyway, that's, that's where we left off. This is now me talking to you on the Monday after the weekend, and we had the submarine regatta uh, down in Yorba Linda Regional Park. And uh, we got there early in the morning, went down there, and actually beat everybody getting in there so we actually could get a place to park, being that it was Easter weekend. Uh, and all the subs were fine when I left, and it's classic with radio-controlled submarines, almost radio-controlled anything, sometimes even airplanes, although they tend to be better at this sort of thing. The uh, skipjack had no uh, rudder control at all, which later on turned out that somehow the ATV, which is a little 
potentiometer that you turn with a screwdriver was turned so far over one way that it wasn't allowing there to be any movement. So the idea of that potentiometer is to, on the old radios, is to lessen the amount of throw that you have. And so it was set to no throw. <laughs> this I found out after I took everything apart, thinking that the servo died. We got it all back together. We got it in the water and it ran really good. I had some issues like the fact that the water at the lake was more buoyant than the water in my fish tank. So I had to re balance it a bit, add more weight to it. Once I did, I got it to go really well. And unfortunately, Mary went back to the uh, motorhome and all the best stuff that we could have got in video, uh, we didn't get. A school of bass came after my sub underwater and they chased it and then I chased them back. It was really fun. Uh, but anyway, I digress. It went very well and it ran very well. Then we went to run the Sea View, and the Sea View has always been a good runner and never given me any trouble. But so as I was saying before Rosie interrupted me with her barking, uh, the Sea View is a good runner, but uh, we're getting radio interference there, uh, what they call dead spots, and I got right in one, and then all of a sudden uh, it got interfered with and it dived. Now I don't have a fail safe on that, so I usually keep it in close. It was out too far and it went straight under and by it, you could not see it. The last thing I saw was it running off on its own out into the lake. And uh, so that was it. I mean, there was really nothing I could do. I couldn't go in after it. Uh, but as it turned out, Jeff uh, Proteus had waders, you know, those things you wear to go fishing. Um, and they thought they could see it. And uh, I'd given up on it and just said, well, you know, cut your losses. I've had this sub for seven years. It bothered me that Big Dave made that cylinder, and it was sort of a Big Dave submarine. And of course, he was my friend who passed away recently. But I figured, well, that's the way it goes. You win some, you lose some. Well, they wouldn't give up looking for it. I went and had lunch. The next day, I know, I see Jeff out there waiting with his waders on uh, in a big, long fishing pole. He says, I found it! <laughs> magically they found the submarine and brought it up so um, you know uh, that would have really kind of deadened the day but just the fact that it was found again like that I, I, I wonder you know big day did we have something to do with that because it's a miracle it was found that's a miracle submarine so anyway uh, let's take a look at what happened to the submarine I'll show you little bits of that Well, here we are. We made it. We're ready. Got here at nine o'clock. All the toys are there. Lots more toys over here. And we got uh, Ralph over here with his skipjack. We all have skipjacks. This is the official skipjack meet. Yeah. They all you look the same. Yeah, mine's mine's more beat up looking. <laughs> We got more toys over here. Another skipjack. Love the Alpha class with that neat looking boat. Guys are all standing around, all quiet. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, what do we got over here? And look, another skipjack. And uh, a Neptune, which is an amazing sub. And this is really cool. It's a nice trim. <laughs> Nothing. We just, we just, we were so lucky. So here, we're finally going to put it in the lake. 
What are you putting in the lake, Steve? Ah, uh, the skipjack, gave, which gave me lots of trouble. Yeah, good reverse. <laughs> I'm bigger. <laughs> I wouldn't hurt you. Right now, it's kind of a dynamic diver, though. I, I need to get more. What I need to do is, uh, it, it's, it, the way it was trimmed at the studio is not the way it's trimmed here. Here's some of the other guys' submarines and boats. So uh, Big Dave's uh, sea view uh, that he built for me got uh, hit by radio interference and this gentleman here, Jeff, went and found it. <laughs> How? I don't know. It was out there. I, I gave up on it. Don't grab it by the sail or it will, the sail will come off your hand. I know. Because that lift. sail's removable. I'll be darned. <laughs> is, it still, is it still answering the control? It is. I just don't want to fall now that I've come this far. So, okay. Wow. Jeff, look yeah. at me. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, this has to be Big Dave that helped us find this. Yeah, it's Thank you, Big Dave. Big Dave is helping us. No kidding. I lost my radar dish, but that's okay. Wow. It's it's all parts are there. You lost uh, some sail stuff, but you can make new ones of those. I know you. <laughs> all right. So there's my boat underwater. Evil thing that it is. Give me trouble all day. I'm gonna bring it back up now. It comes up nice. shooting myself at the same time I'm driving the boat. Which is a good trick. Is there a boom on the stay sail? Yeah, not much of one. That sail, it's supposed to blow across and it has a hard time. Yeah, I love just sailing. gave it away about three months ago. Oh. In my storage unit, there was a seven-year-old kid. They had just bought a house on a lake. 
Oh, wow. She says, if you'll take care of this, I'll give it to you. <laughs> That's wonderful. See, that's the kind of boat you can sit down and play all day. What's that? See that? Okay, well that's it for our show. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for all your help. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for all your support. And did I just sorry? Yeah, I think I did say thanks. For, well, I'll, I'll thank you again. Thanks for your support. We really love you a whole bunch. And we'll see you next week.